All right, you ready? Yeah. Then I can do like a cool intro. Like you're not gonna do. I don't know. You busted my balls out so bad last time. <laughs> exactly. No, we're just going in dry. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. No foreplay. No artistic. Nothing. We're no, just no, doing no, it. Don't treat me special or anything. No. Uh. Uh-uh, no. Okay. All right. Here we go. Welcome to Drifter Guitars. My name is Chris. Behind the camera is Matt, as always. And it's another episode of the 3,000-year-old guitar build. We're finally into the neck. Uh, and what we have to do today is to take the fretboard that we previously bound in the last episode, uh, and we're going to thickness it, radius it, and then get it glued onto the neck so that we can finally get this neck uh, bolted onto the guitar. So that's it's, what we're going to do. It's the next step. Let's see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't fret it. <laughs> uh, as I always like to do with all of our videos is to kind of uh, show you what I'm going to do but also help out those of you who don't have all the same tooling that we have um, to achieve hopefully the same result. So what I'm going to do at this point is we're going to run this through the drum sander. Nice and easy on my end, but I know that most folks don't have drum sanders because it's such an expensive tool. So uh, if you have been doing exactly like us at home, you, you've got the same thing that we have here, which is a fretboard that has um, the binding on it, but the binding is proud on this side and it's proud on this side. Um, so what we need to do is get it level, particularly level on the bottom side, um, because that's obviously we need to have no gaps. Um, once we glue this down, if you don't get it perfectly flat, you're going to end up with a seam there that's visible and nobody wants that. Um, so what I would recommend that you do is use some hand planes, some small hand planes would work really well to come across here uh, and carefully take this down. In fact, let me just grab one real quick. Let me just. So yes, um, by using a hand plane, you can come in here and take this down until it gets nice and smooth. Um, we're using um, figured maple for our binding, so it can be a little, really easy to accidentally chip this out and cause issues there, which is the reason why I like using the drum sander in this particular case. But yeah, you could do that. Um, you could also use um, sandpaper stuck perfectly flat down and then run this across here uh, like that. What I would not recommend is using some sort of um, DA electric sander, which is a lot of people's gonna be their gut to just come in here and sand this down. If you do that, you're gonna slowly and very gently roll the edges here and it's, you're gonna have a gap. Uh, between the fretboard and the neck. So with that, what I'm gonna do is we'll go through and I will run this through the drum sander, being very careful not to make it any thinner. We just wanna just get the binding flush and that's it. We interrupt these messages to tell you guys a little bit about some of the products we sell on our website. As always, we have these awesome paint handles that uh, are literally as they sound. These are designed to be able to screw onto the body of your guitar, so if you're refinishing at home, you can do that so much easier. And then we just started making these. We're calling these the uh, uh, the uh, the fret caddy, I guess. Um, and what this will do is allow you guys a space to hold all your frets when you're doing refrets on guitars, your bridge pins, and then this really, really fun little magnetic parts holder. Um, and it just kind of makes uh, makes it less likely that you're gonna lose some of your stuff. These items- It's a nice way to have some driven guitars on your bench too. Hey! <laughs> these, uh, these... Call now. <laughs> <laughs> if you order within the next five minutes, you'll get two of them. You won't get, you'll get two if you order two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, check those out. Um, we do have the link for these down below. Okay, coming off the um, the drum sander here, you can see what we've got is this is all perfectly flush here, which is the goal because I'll show you how nice and tight everything looks. You apply a little pressure to it and you have no gaps there. Um, that's what you're shooting for, no gaps. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is put a radius on said fretboard. And just like I was talking about um, how I do it versus what you can do at home. Uh, we are gonna use a very new method that Matt and I just started doing uh, probably in the last month. Uh, we have these router bits that we bought online. I'll have to, we'll put a link to it down below so that you guys can see them. I found them and they are designed to go ahead and use a router table to be able to put the radius into these fretboards, which makes really fast work of it. Um, not quite as simple as we thought to use and we've had to make jigs to make it work. So I think most folks at home are gonna be doing this the old school way. What a lot of y'all folks at home are gonna be using is radius sanding blocks. This is one that we've got. Uh, the wonderful folks over at Skyscraper Guitars um, actually gave us, and these things have been absolutely awesome. Very similar to the ones that Stu Max sells and LMI and all the other guys. You can get these, um, the cheap Chinese ones off of eBay. Uh, 
the skyscraper guys are really awesome. So go support to them. Uh, small business out of Colorado. If Very stylish in the orange, that. too. Yes, love the orange. It's always a thing. Um, it's going to be up to you, um, depending on which guitar you're building, whether you're doing an electric or an acoustic, to come up with what size radius you want to put on your fretboard. Um, I don't use the 14 inch radius on my acoustics. Um, I just happened to grab this one to show y'all. Um, I originally started on my acoustics putting a 20 inch radius on my fretboards. Um, I am now using a 16 inch radius. Um, for those of you who are watching this and maybe don't know what I mean when I talk about um, the size of the radius, what we're talking about is if you were to take, since I use a 16 inch radius, so we would draw a 16 inch um, circle uh, no, we would draw a 32 32. inch, a 32 inch. I'd always double the radius. I always hear my, uh, my high school, um, drafting teacher who always double the radius. <laughs> <laughs> so what we mean when I talk about a 30, uh, I'm sorry, a 16 inch radius. If you were to draw a 32 inch circle here, um, that is what this tiny little slight radius is on this. Um, and then what we need to do is then get that radius on the fretboard. Um, it's a personal preference thing. Um, acoustics tend to have a much softer radius than electric guitars. I would say like a common radius on an acoustic guitar would be like a 20 inch or a 16 inch. Uh, classical guitars have flat fretboards, so you don't radius those ones at all for a true classical guitar versus electric guitars, which they can get down really tight. You're talking about six inch, seven inch radiuses on the fretboards, or they'll do a compound radius where it'll be seven inch radius here and a 12 inch radius on the end and it slowly gradually changes. Um, so what we're gonna use is a 16 inch and we can normally use just a sanding block and what you would do in that case is you would double sided tape, this is what works well for me at least, you would double side tape your fretboard down to a workbench or if you can do better than that, I would recommend doing it on top of like your table saw or something like that that you know has been milled perfectly flat. Uh, double sided tape that down and then you're just gonna sit here and sand to your heart's content and get this thing nice and flat. Uh, Matt knows it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> also, you want to tell the folks about the pencil method for uh, for knowing whenever you're done. Yes. The, uh, um, I don't need to necessarily grab a pencil, but you could take um, either a, the, a light colored white pencil works really good for this, like a colored pencil, and you just do scratch marks across here. Uh, and then as you sand, you'll see where you have still t some time to go. Um, so you'll have spots in the middle that still need some work, which is going to tell you that you're going to require some more sanding. But what we are going to do is we're going to use this awesome router bit that we have here. Um, raise it up uh, and then just quickly hopefully cut this thing out really fast and then all that's going to be required is just a little bit of touch up with some sandpaper. The way that this works normally for us is I actually made this jig for, as you can see our electric guitar necks fit right inside of here and then we can just clamp them in place and, go, and rip them right across. Um, my acoustic fretboard's obviously not going to work in that situation so what I'm going to do is I'm going to double side tape that fretboard onto here and then we can let it rip across here. Uh, if you are using a router table like this, if you happen to buy the bits that we're using here, um, one thing I'm gonna note, you don't wanna just glue this on in any way. You wanna make sure that it's perfectly horizontal. You don't wanna have it like that. You wanna make sure that it is following a, a nice center line right down the middle of the neck in order for this to work. Okay, got the fretboard double-sided taped onto here, looking good, feeling good. The other thing that I did, and I'm doing all this just kind of not uh, not exact by taking measurements, but is to get the top end of the um, the cutting blade there, right at about the halfway mark. That's going to be the other the other thing that you want to make sure you do with this particular um, type of router bit. But yeah, so you can see the, the the gradual radius that's on here. Like I said, that's a 16-inch bit, so we should be ready to uh, fire in the hole now. So let's just see what happens. That's the way to go. But yeah, so Matt and I, God, we're only like five or six guitars in. No, this first batch of the electrics that we just did, this last batch. Mm -hmm. like, so we've only done this like six or seven times, um, this new router table method. But man, 
Look at that. I don't, this is probably not gonna pick up on camera how we've already got the rough radius no, in yeah, there, looks right? Good. Looks good, right? Yeah. Um, so this fretboard still needs probably just a little bit of sanding on it. And so I'll hit this really, really fast. I probably actually shouldn't have removed this. Uh, and then it's ready to glue on. You're gonna get the exact same results if you're doing this by hand. This is just saves you so much time uh, and sweat from having to do it the other way. So uh, yeah, I'll just hit this with some sandpaper real fast just to get it smoothed up and then we're gonna be ready to glue it onto the, um, to the neck of the guitar. All right, so you guys, I did it off camera. I just decided that you didn't need to see it because sanding is sanding. We've got this thing absolutely perfect now. No, no um, sort of uh, ridges on it at all. Uh, it just looks super good and at this point, it's time to glue this thing onto the neck. Um, I did want to hit on some people that are going to go, well, why didn't you, why don't you radius it once you glue it to the guitar, like once you glue it down to the um, neck of the guitar. Problem is, is um, that the neck is going to have either a back bow or, or a, um, a, a forward bow on it. Uh, and then it's not going to allow you to be able to get this thing perfectly smoothed down truly. So that's why I think it's better to go ahead and radius your fretboard while it's glued down to something that you know is totally flat. Um, just save yourself some trouble down the road. So also prevention's a pound of cure. That's right. Yeah. That's, Matt's just full of quips today. Uh, <laughs> so what I need to do is just grab the truss rod. We'll set it in here and then I'm going to show you guys really quickly how I go about clamping this um, so that it doesn't slide all over the place. Okay. What we've got is, uh, I've been using these for years. We talked about them in a previous episode where uh, we had the uh, the client give us the, what is it, $25,000 guitar, can it be fixed or not, where the truss rod was broken. Um, these are the Stumac uh, two-way hot rod truss rods. Love them, we had that one issue with the one, but it, those happen sometimes, no big deal. Got that in there. Um, what I have done is I've gone ahead and marked Hopefully this will pick up on camera. I've marked where the end of my fretboard needs to go. And what that is, is kind of compensating for where the saddles, I'm sorry, where the nut's gonna go as well. And that's gonna be what I need to line up this neck to so that it sits perfectly on there. Um, yeah, and so what we need to do now is just apply some glue and we can go ahead and move on. Uh, just wanted to give one more quick warning because I know so many folks always comment that they're kind of building along at home with us here. Do not glue the fretboard on if you haven't cut your mortise and tenon. Don't do it because there's no way to cut your mortise and tenon. And if you're doing a dovetail, same thing. Make sure that you have sorted out your neck joint attachment method at this point. Um, I also do highly recommend that you go ahead and like we did in the previous episode, get that get it set so that it's at the right angle. Uh, because once you glue this fretboard on, things are gonna get a lot more difficult. So that's just my quick warning. As always, LMI, um, Instrument Glue, Trident Trusty, our good friend here. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't get a whole bunch of glue squeezed out down inside the truss rod channel. Folks will go even as far as masking this off. I have never really had that, I've never put that much effort into it. It's, it's not a big deal to get a little bit of glue down inside of there. But yeah, we'll get this on here and then I'll show you how I, how I clamp it in place. Um, don't go too crazy as always. If you want, you could use epoxy. I, I recommend using some sort of deconstructible glue um, in case you ever do have the need to replace the truss rod. You can at least remove the fretboard. Every once in a while, I will use epoxy if I'm feeling brave. <laughs> Let's spread this. It's like turning there. in your homework in Sharpie. Exactly. <laughs> I'm confident. I always find that it's best to get your glue all the way to the edge. Well, you don't want it just gooped on here though. At this point, if you've been building along at home, I think hopefully you've learned your lesson that you don't need to like douse everything in glue. I have had also had people comment like, why aren't you applying glue to both faces? Ne never had an issue. I don't see the need for it. Um, I said it. <laughs> Find them in the comment section. <laughs> so here's what I do. Obviously, when if you were to just put some clamps on here, it's gonna slide all over the place. Um, in an early episode, like in what are we like on our 50th episode or something of this? Um, but early, like in the single digits episodes, I talked about using um, table salt, sprinkle some salt on here so that things don't slide around. I, uh, I've abandoned ship on that method, especially for this particular spot because I don't want to have granules of salt showing here. So in order to keep this from sliding around, what I like to use is some binding tape. Um, and I very carefully get this right where I need it pushing down with good pressure and we get it in place. Same thing here. 
this is just uh, to keep it from sliding around. And by wrapping it around both sides, it's going to keep it from sliding this way, left, right, as well as this way. Um, you're still going to need to be careful. And you notice how I'm not like in a crazy hurry. Um, if anything, by going a little bit slower here, it's going to let this glue set up just a very little bit and do a little bit of that work for us of keeping it from sliding around. I'll do two more. So what I like to do now is get this in the vise. You can, if you want, use the vise as a clamp. I find that it's just a little bit hard to control. Um, okay, so what I've got is a, just an equal amount of overhang on each side, and it's just the tiniest little bit of overhang. It's 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 all part of the design, right? Um, and we're going to set this as a clamping call on here, right? So you're gonna sit real nice and purdy on there. Now I can get my clamps going. Uh, so the trick with this first one is to make sure that you're not when you go to clamp it down that you're not changing all the geometry on everything. That did not work. <laughs> Change clamps. You don't want this to uh, slide all over the place when you get this first one on here. So just being very paying close attention for this first clamp. Uh, and what I find is to not go nuts. Just get it started, right? We're not gonna, we don't need to get it completely clamped on at this for the first clamp. This is a good general rule for all clamping, honestly. Um, just, it's kind of like tightening the bolts on a, on anything you do with automotive stuff. You know, you don't want to tighten them all down at, at, at the same time. You want to slowly crank them up. All right, so now before I go and really start cranking down on this thing, I want to double check everything. Make sure that we haven't slid, and it has slid just a very little bit that way. And you can kind of like adjust how you have the clamps on if you need to apply pressure one way or the other um, to help get it to where you need it to go there you go but yeah you see how i mean you gotta you just gotta check don't just like uh, make assumptions that everything hasn't moved on you um because it can happen quickly next thing you know you're chasing your tail uh and then what happens is all that work we did in the previous episode where we got everything lined up is kind of out the window and you're gonna have to like redo it all never too many clamps if your spouse is asking why you need more clamps, it's just a fact of life. <laughs> that's it. Looks good to me. So that's pretty much how I go about getting the fretboard onto the neck of a guitar. Uh, and at this point, we're ready to rock and roll and get um, our, our, our inserts in so that we can get the neck bolted on. And then we're going to start focusing our attention on the headstock, get the headstock overlay and the back strap on it. But uh, I hope you guys learned a little something in this one, and we're getting close to the finish line, so keep sticking with us. More episodes to come, and make sure you check out those links down below for some of the tools that we're offering, and we'll see you guys in the next one.